Hey, hey everybody, happy Friday. I am Jane from Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. I'm very excited to finish our little eggs that I painted with milk paint on Monday. So if you missed this or you wanna know how to paint them to give them this kind of crazy look, I'm not done with them yet. Um, but I just used milk paint in Wisteria. Is this gorgeous periwinkle blue color I'm obsessed with. And Strasburg White. And these are both Amy Howard at Home Toscana milk paints. You can get those. Um, good morning, Shannon, with the tulips. Oh, Shannon, we have all kinds of things blooming here in Connecticut already. Um, hey, Brenda. Oh, thank you, Shannon. Happy rainy Friday, yeah, it is It is today. Hey, Deborah, it has been a while. Hey, Barb, hey there. Well, I'm excited, you know, I kind of took a chance because every time I go live at this time of the day, the sun has been coming in, but like Brenda said, it's happy rainy Friday. So we've got a nice overclass sky, so I don't have to worry about the, the sun, you know, kind of blurring, not blurring everything, but blowing everything out. So it's perfect. Um, you know, it's, 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 it was nice yesterday. The sun was out. I was out a lot, but I'll take it today so I could go live. Hey, Danielle, good morning. Yes, all the flowers are wonderful. And my husband, Rick, bought last year, I think, 250 or 300 daffodil bulbs, narcissus bulbs, because we have a lot of deer. We don't mind them. We love them. Um, we don't really have landscaping, but we're on nine acres of kind of woods. So he went out and I bought him one of those, those bulb things that you stick in the ground and turn it makes it easy, but he naturalized the da the daffodils because there's no leaves on the trees, all on the hills that we can see. So I can't. So they're all coming up. The deer don't eat them. The squirrels don't like them. So um, I can't wait to see them blooming. Oh, Danielle, thank you. Thanks for sprinkling everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, so if you want to see how I painted these, just go to YouTube. Uh, surface anthology and you can see how I painted them. It's just milk paint. It's it's like using uh, Gouache opaque watercolors. It's so much fun. You can do them very kind of soft and dreamy or with a really hard edge like this really fun um, Or very pale like how beautiful is that? So I want to show you how I'm going to gild these and then I want to show you how I'm going to be displaying Playing them because everybody all the blogs I follow they're all doing um, you know what their Easter table is gonna look like and you know yeah I used to do that when I that's how I started this whole blogging thing was um, my house because I was building this house and I was actually the GC I will never do that again um, and I used to do like what was happening in the house and my tables and all this stuff. So I'm gonna do that this year. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot my table uh, with all these things that I make. Right? Might as well show you what I'm doing with them. So here's this beautiful gold leaf. Now you could, if you're like super into the variegated copper, stunning. Do whatever you think would match um, your decor, right? This variegated copper, that's the actual side that you're going to see coming out, you know, displayed, is stunning and would look beautiful with the blue. Um, you could do eggs and beautiful pinks or green, red, whatever you like. Yellows with copper would be breathtaking. Now I can't get this back in. Um, and you can also do, if you're, if you're really into cool colors, <clears throat> silver would be stunning. Be really, really beautiful with 
these blues, right? Look at that. Really nice. Very um, cool, really beautiful look. But I'm not doing that. I'm doing gold. So let's get going. Now, I have to tell you, there's a million different ways that you can do this, literally. You're only limited by your imagination. I've, I found this dauber. I don't know what a dauber is, but I saw these eggs. It was like on the Martha Stewart, you know, email. And they were polka dots. And I'm like, oh, I want to do polka dots. But my dauber is kind of big. I'm going to try it anyway and see. Look, you could put your finger in it. Um, but I want to try that. You can also take, I grabbed this from my stash, a very fine, where's the end, brush. And you can do like a beautiful pattern, right? A little pattern um, with the size and create something very, very fine, very delicate. You can use a larger brush and kind of do, you know, teardrop shapes. So you should have fun with this. And these are, by the way, paper mache eggs. They're really, really inexpensive and a lot of fun um, to make over. So let me pour out my size. Now size is the glue that you need for gilding. And this is even too much. I mean, you use very, very little of this. All right. And I've got my brush. Now, you saw me dip it in some water. I'm going to dry this. You know, not dry it completely, but we don't want to dilute the size because then it just won't be sticky. I dipped it in water because it's, you know, when you get them new, they're, they're stiff. They put something in it to keep all the bristles in shape. Deborah is saying, I love the color of those eggs. Blue just happens to be my favorite. Deborah, me too. I just um, gravitate to this kind of blue. This is, it's called wisteria. It's like a periwinkle to me. So it's got some of that violet in it. And that's also why I love navy blue, deep navy blue, like a true navy blue that has violet. Not that kind of navy from the 80s that was a little gray. Oh, I'm like, you know, I could talk about color, but I love that really deep, deep navy, almost black with a touch of violet. Oh, I love it. So I'm with you. All right, so let's start with this egg. Now, the other thing I saw, and if you go, you're going to go down a rabbit hole if you go on Pinterest or look stuff up, um, but I'm obsessed with that Japanese, and I wanted to tell you guys what it's called. I looked at the name. But it's where they repair china with enamel that they then gild with gold. It is so beautiful. It's like, oh, you're going to want to break a plate just to repair it. But I saw somebody make eggs with that. I'm like, that's really cool with kind of that veining that you would see. Um, so let's try it. So I've got my little brush. I'm dipping it into the size. And I'm just going to kind of move the brush and I'm turning it of course mine is looking curly you can't go wrong with this it's all going to just look beautiful because it's gold <laughs> So I just made, oops, there we go. I just made some little lines, right? And you can go crazy with this and do lots of big lines. You can um, be very minimal with your gold. It's like whatever you want to do. So now I'm going to put this down. We're going to let it come to tack, right? This glue, this size, never, it's chin, chinoiserie. It's not that. It's, if you guys look up, um, but you know, you're, you're getting close. Um, if you look up Japanese repair method using lacquer and gilding, um, you will see, oh, I didn't bring a tissue. I'm going to, how many of you use your paint rags as a tissue, right? 
And then we wonder why we have paint on our faces. Okay, so I also suspect this is going to, um, and it is, it's coming to tack really quickly. So I'm actually going to gild this one, put your brush in water. And the reason it's coming to tack so quickly is that it's on milk paint. It's on a very porous paint, right? So it's going to dry out. Oh no, the audio keeps going in and out. Is that happening for everybody? Deborah, there's not a lot for us that I can do. Um, on this end, it might be, it might be your internet, but let's hear if anybody else is having that issue. All right, so I'm just opening to some gold here, and I'm just gonna, I just rolled up the egg in the gold. And you can do this with real eggs, you guys, too. It's okay for you, not here. So, Deborah, what you can do is go out and come back in again and see if that's um, the issue. Okay, brush off. And it just stays. How pretty, right? Isn't that fun? And it just, you know, wherever that size was, it stays. And if I want to add more later, and I probably will, you know, all the way around, I can do that. So there's one, and I'm saving this. Now, let's try this dauber. How many of you guys have daubers? I didn't even know. I'm like, this came in a kit that I got ages ago, and I had saved it. Let's try this one. And these are going to be random polka dots, we'll say, right? So I'm dipping the dauber into the size. I've never used one of these before. All right? And I'm just going to kind of do random polka dots. Can you guys see this? I can't, I'm not sure where my camera is. All right, I'm just going around. Like that. Look at that, let's see how this looks. This is drying really quickly. And I think what I should have done is have a little tiny shallow dish of water because I, we don't wanna let this dry. And here comes the sun. Cloisonne, nope. It's, I think it, oh man, I think it starts with an SH. It's Japanese. It is Japanese porcelain repair with lacquer and gilding. And it is stunning. It's stunning. Very Japanese, like it's just Japanese, right? So this is, I'm going to let it sit for a minute. Actually, while I'm waiting, I'm going to do the back. You can, I, a lot of these eggs I do in parts because you get your fingers all over everything. <laughs> Shannon, oh my God, I, you find those sticky little round dauber tops all over. They fall off eventually from the black part. Yeah, this, it looks like something, I mean, it, it looks cool. I'm getting some really nice polka dots here, but... It's not something that I, I've i ever needed to use, except now for my fabulous polka dot egg, right? Right on top. Do any of you listen to, do you know who Agatha Raisin is? <laughs> oh, I, have, I was trying to do a bunch of things this morning and when I'm running around the house, out to the garage and stuff, I don't listen to music because, you know, I can't be in that room. So I, um, I'm going to put this down, let it come to tack. So I listen to audiobooks, and I was listening to An Agatha Raisin Mystery by M.C. Beaton, and it is, uh, it's hilarious. I highly recommend them. You have to listen to the ones that are narrated by Penelope Keith, I think her name is. It's so fabulous. Oh, you put me on YouTube. Okay, so you could hear me, right? Deborah? Yeah, try it, Shannon. I'm telling you. 
It makes perfect little dots. All right, what should we do with this? Maybe some dry brushing. Now for dry brushing, I didn't bring over my artist brush, uh, my natural bristle artist brush, because you don't want anything too smooth. So I'll try my um, my flat, my square brush here. I don't, <coughs> I don't know if this is gonna work though. Let's see. Dry it really, really well. And then dip it in. And this one's got some texture. So I'm just going to kind of run my brush like this. Just kind of from the bottom of the egg to the top. And of course, my fingers are in the way. So, see that? All right, let's see if we will put that down, let it come to tack. Let's get our polka dots. I'm gonna roll it in my scraps here. Now yeah, I'm gonna need to get another sheet. That's me being thrifty. Okay, let me grab another sheet. This is what, I was almost late because I'm like, oh my God, I checked my gold leaf. I'm like, I have to go get more gold leaf. I'm out of gold leaf. Okay, so let's open this up. A nice brand new book. There we go. And I'm just gonna roll the egg. And you can just gold leaf eggs, have solid gold eggs. You appreciate my thriftiness. Oh, you know it, Danielle. Like Nadine said, um, I think on Monday, we are we're the New England Yankees, right? We're, we're very thrifty. That's a nice way to put it. Okay, and I'm going to brush away. Really press this down. And you just brush away the excess. And you know what, you guys? I mean, these are called uh, gold leaf flakes. They sell gold leaf flakes. Hey, Cheryl, happy Friday. How is it down in Virginia? Oh, these are cool. Look at these polka dots. Oh, I, this might be my favorite. Okay, now, Shannon, I'm going to be like the, the dauber queen. I'm going to be like comparing daubers. Okay, that one wasn't totally adhering. Let me press this down. And yep. I know a lot of you are gonna ask me about finishing these eggs. I probably won't, um, but if you want to, you just grab your wax and finish them off. Oh my gosh, how fun is that? Of course, it helps. Like I've got two polka dots together on the top, but look at how cute this egg is. Oh, I could die, this is so cute with the polka dots. I love that, that's my favorite. Um, so how much fun is this, right? Maybe Kintsugi? <laughs> is that it? I hope that's it, Deborah. You're being so great looking that up. Warm, uh, Cheryl's saying it's warm. You went to D.C. to see the cherry blossoms. I bet it was gorgeous. Isn't that the cutest, Shannon? Look at that. How much fun is that? All right, let's see how our dry brush egg is coming out. And then I won't make you watch me do the rest of these, but I'm gonna do just random stuff, whatever I think of. And I'm gonna leave some of them just plain. All right, same thing. All right, we just wrap it up in the gold.
All right, and then brush away. Let's see what we got. For dry brushing, I really should have used a natural bristle brush. Oh no, it came out pretty cool. Look at that, it's really pretty, very pretty. Of course, my brush isn't that clean. It's got milk paint dust coming out of it. Uh, I need a staff, honestly. <laughs> oh, Cheryl, you're so sweet. Cheryl's saying, you're funny. We, we, your loyal followers, love to watch you do anything. We are part of the I love to watch paint dry crowd, right? Exactly. It's like watching a cooking show. Oh, it really is. Except we don't have to deal with those calories, right? Look at how beautiful that is. So that was just kind of dry brushing, right? The gilding over this. And imagine how these would look with silver. You would get a very different kind of a look from that, but really beautiful. Um, and there's that crazy little one, right? It works for you, and Deborah's like, I agree. Oh, Barb, you're trying to find the color sage in chalk paint. Okay, now, what are we going to say about color, right? And I know you were looking at the DIY paint. Sage, sage green, I think of sage as a green, right? And it's like saying slate gray or graphite, right? there's probably 500 million different colors of sage. So Barb, do you have like a swatch of a sage that you love? Um, that would be the way to do it, you know? I know when I had Authentico, there was, there were over 250 colors and there was definitely a sage green in there. But um, how about anybody out there have a favorite sage green? Or Barb, is there a, a, again, is there a sage that you love that you've seen maybe in a, in a, a non-chalk paint line that you can match it to? Color is so hard when you're matching it. It's, it's you know, I might come up with something and you'll be like, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> That's not the sage I'm thinking of. All right. So let us know what Waverly. Oh, there we go. Deborah's saying, uh, Barb, Waverly has an, a, Chalk paint named sage. Folk art has a sage color, Barb is saying. Is that the color you like? If so, I would check out that Waverly. Where do they sell Waverly? Probably at like Michael's, right? Hobby Lobby. Probably get it on Amazon. You can get anything on Amazon. All right. So I've got all my little containers. Now, I collect, you know, unfortunately, I chipped this one. I like old chips. I don't like new chips. I'm really, I just discovered this this morning and I'm totally bummed because this is like, this is heavenly perfection to me. It's all stained from, you know, years of use. It's really beautiful. It's old. It's an antique. Um, but I, I, I'm going to fill this and show you how I, I'm going to display eggs. Okay, and Brent, Walmart, you could get it at Walmart. Celery, celery is what you're thinking of as a sage, Cheryl, right? Somewhere I saw a color chart of mixed DIY colors. You, ah, oh, there you go. Um, go to DIY a go go. I love that, and and ask about that. Ah, oh, Shannon says I went through my milk paint, and green is my fave. There might be a sage in there. Yep. And yeah, and Barb, if you get like a formula, I mean, it's easier to just buy one that you really like, but if you get a formula from the different lines, that would be really great too. So this, this is a little, I throw these things in. This is one of those little German containers. I sold all the egg-shaped ones, um, so I just did circles last year. This is the one I, I did this, um, 
decoupage on YouTube and it, and it made one woman crazy. She's like, I could never decoupage like that. It's all wrinkled. <laughs> what a mess. I'm like, yeah, I love wrinkly decoupage. The mold itself is molded paper, so it had like a wrinkle, but you know, I love it. I love it just like this. I think it's fabulous, but I might throw this in with my eggs. So I'll, I have teacups like this that I put around and you can throw in, this is moss. And this is all left over for when I had a um, ornament of the month. I used to, you know, they would have kits every month. But look at how sweet the green with the blue, right? I love that. And then you could put an egg right like that, right? Wait, or should I do it like this? Oh my God. Have you seen, have you seen all the um, people doing live sales now? Tammy's doing that and doing really well. And then I was watching this guy. He's so hilarious. I, I think it's called a nested fig. I was dying watching him do a live sale. But look at how sweet, right? So there's one way to do it. And then I collect all these, these old containers. Like for the middle of a table. Isn't this a fabulous shape? I just love it. And now... An issue I have is that my blues are really different, right? And that kind of stuff bothers me, you guys. So I don't know that I'm going to use this for these eggs. I might put maybe this kind of stuff in it, right? But I just wanted to give you ideas. So you, you take this, you could fill this up with moss. And this moss is pretty inexpensive, right? And I need more. I also have Spanish moss. You could use this too. But I love this green. So what I will do if I need to lift this, crush up some newspaper and put that underneath. But then you can put your eggs in like this. Do any of you do this for um, for your Easter table? Or is it just bloggers? <laughs> Are any of you doing this stuff? I think it's so much fun. But I would fill this up definitely with... Um, I think more eggs like this, you know, more white and blue. So that's another thing to use. And then of course my favorite is ironstone. And these are so perfect. You could put this in a bathroom. You know, I have these everywhere. And you fill these up, get your moss. It just looks pretty with just the moss. <laughs> but I bought these little, I went to, um, I don't remember where it was, maybe Marshall's. They had these beautiful Italian chocolate Easter eggs, you know, little ones. I'm hiding them from Matteo and myself. Um, but how cute would uh, little tiny chocolate eggs be in this, right? Oh my God, Shannon's laughing. <laughs> It's beautiful in the teacup, right? I know. It's a fresh, springy way to update a small area. Absolutely, Cheryl. Oh, Shannon's asking. No, my hands were covered in paint. So Shannon asked, when I painted my eggs, did I do half, let it dry, then do the other half? No, I was just holding them and kind of turning them around. You could see my, my finger marks. If they had to be perfect, you know what? If they had to be perfect, I'd probably spray paint them. But I did that because milk paint, you get such an edge when you add more paint to it. So I knew I just had to do like the white all at once and just, I kind of rolled it around when the blue was kind of flowing over them. And that's, you know, that's what I did. So yeah, I just did it all at once, Shannon. Um, but look at how sweet. I mean, this is so sweet. See, these are too big. See, and now you're going to see how picky I am. I'm like, oh my God, these are too big. But look at what a cute little display this is in the ironstone. How beautiful is that? These eggs are too big for this one. 
I, will, I promise I'm going to do a whole blog post, you guys, about all my containers and the way I do it because I really love doing it. But look at how absolutely darling that is, isn't it? It's just the cutest. Um, and you can get these now. I'm, Ironstone has kind of gone out of favor a little bit again, but they're so beautiful. This You could put a little bow at the bottom. Oh my God, how cute is that, right? All right. And then lastly... Well, no, second to lastly, I have this one that I love. This is one of my faves. This is a, it's really heavy. Um, this, I have so much of this stuff, you guys. But this is beautiful for the middle of a table because it's, it's kind of large. It's footed. You could put it up on a riser if you want. But you throw in your moss. You can get, what if you get those, Little, those little narcissus, like flat bulbs blooming. Oh my God, how cute would that look coming out of this? I never think far ahead for stuff like that. But look at, and then you can just put your eggs in, right? Really sweet. And I'm really piling these. like Martha had on her website. <laughs> ah, of course, Martha has an entire crew. Look at how pretty. That I love, just all piled in. Let's see if you can see, right? How beautiful is that? Put it right in the middle and it's just very festive, right? Really, really sweet. And you definitely, if you use gold like this, you got to have gold somewhere else. I always go by the rule of threes. Like, you know, I had a, a, a guy, a wonderful designer that I used to do his hair. That's, I learned so much about design from doing designer's hair. And he says, every room should have black in it in three places because it grounds the room. And I'm like, okay. And it, it always stuck with me. And then he talked about using, like, if you use red in a room, you want to use it in three spots. But how fun is that, right? Beautiful. And then I wanted to show you one more thing. I have these little egg cups. And we don't use egg cups. My mother used to use them when my brother and I were little, right? These I got, if you go to Goodwill, have you ever heard of El Pico? It's French, it's porcelain. I'm always at Goodwill turning over porcelain pieces. And I get El Pica for nothing, I'm telling you, at Goodwill. And it's it's indestructible, I love it. Oh good, Cheryl. <laughs> I love that. Cheryl says, I have three black cats, so I'm all good. And you know what, who said that? Was it Matisse that said that having a cat is like having like moving sculpture, moving art in the house, right? I love it. But look at how sweet, right? Our little gold egg. I could just, <laughs> When, you know, when I'm making believe I'm Martha Stewart, at each place setting, because I have a ton of these, put an egg at each place setting, right? And how sweet is that? I love it. Really, really easy. Really pretty. Let's see what a plain. Look at that. Or you could put them on a windowsill in a row with little eggs in them. I just love it. And if you really want to get fancy, you get paper cupcake liners and cut a, um, what is that called, scalloped edge, and put them in there, and how sweet would that be, right? Really beautiful. And then you can tell everybody, I painted those eggs myself, right? Oh, look what Deborah's saying. Yes, absolutely. This gorgeous arrangement would have to go on my antique dresser in my master. We'll definitely be doing this. Oh, excellent. Deborah, share pictures with us. Um, hey, Janet, what I was going to say before I answer your question, Janet, I had, I am not a designer. My mom did really, really beautiful. She had a, a natural eye. She was amazing, um, with plants. She would just go out in the woods and come, come back out, you know, uh, with all kinds of vines and things. And she would do like inside of our fireplace, she would do a big arrangement in the spring and summer. 
and um, would never buy plastic flowers or she wouldn't even buy, buy flowers at the you know flower shop. Everything came out of the woods or her yard. She had one of those eyes. But I've hung around a lot of designers like my mom and they do, in every room they put something, right? In every room. They're like, because I used to think, oh, I guess we would, you know, you decorate the living room and the dining room. I don't know. They're decorating everything, right? Every single thing is decorated. Why not, right? Have fun with it because um, it's so pretty. Now, Janet's asking, will you seal these? I probably won't. And all my stuff, and by the way, I have a bunch of these. This is that uh, Tim Holtz, because I know somebody's going to ask, um, decoupage paper. I don't know if they have this one anymore, but I have a bunch of his stuff. Um, I do not seal them, Janet. But if I did, I would just put wax. I wouldn't put um, a matte sealer because the wax will make them look just, it, it adds a little depth to the paint, um, a little luminosity. And I just, I you know, if, if you feel like they might get roughed up, you could absolutely do that. Now, take out the gold and you can put in, right, something like this thrown in with the eggs, right? Really beautiful. And, and just put that out, right? <laughs> because I can't wait for what my sons are going to say when they see all this stuff. Oh, the last thing I have to show you and ask you guys, is anybody else obsessed with Bon, bon Maman uh, marmalade like I am? I'm obsessed. So I have these jars. And I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is fill each of these up because I can't throw these out or recycle them. I now have like 800 of these, but fill them up with um, maybe jelly beans, chocolates, little Easter treats, and put one of these at each place setting. But then look at this. I have to show you guys. Oh my. Look at the miniature one. <laughs> my husband, he's so sweet. Look at this. How adorable are these? My husband got me the advent calendar, the Bon Maman advent calendar, and it's little jams that I, you know, there's so many and they're so cute. But I'm like, oh my God, maybe they make miniature jelly beans I could throw in these. But how adorable is that, right, Cheryl? How cute is that? Home Goods has it. Yep, absolutely. Oh my God, Cheryl, Home Goods is where I get my, um, what's that really good vanilla? Um, it's so, this vanilla, you guys, if you have a Home Goods or a, a Marshalls near you, um, go in there for stuff like vanilla, for honey. Um, it's so, it's so good. And I cannot remember the name of this, this vanilla, but it's really good stuff. And it's such a great price at Marshalls. But yeah, how cute is that? Maybe I'll just do a whole display. Massey, that's it. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> you you know it. I said to my husband, oh my God, because I was baking um, over the weekend. I made that. I made a Guinness uh, cake. It was Nigella Lawson's Guinness beer cake. It was delicious. And I'm like, we're almost out of our vanilla. We have to go to Marshall's. Oh, Shannon's saying that jam is at Fred Meyer Kroger's. Absolutely. It's delicious. And I love marmalade. But it's the jars, and I have them all over my sewing room, all over my craft room. They're really nice. You could throw buttons in here, all kinds of stuff. But I'm like, how cute are the little baby ones? Really sweet, right? So, so there's all my my uh, my containers that I could use for decor, right? So that's it. I yep, we're all very fancy. We're getting too fancy for our britches, right? <laughs> Oh, I wish they just made a grape. I do love grape jam. And um, I don't think they make a grape jam. It's all like these crazy flavors. Like this is strawberry star anise spread. I mean, how adorable is this? And I love the, um, the gingham tops. So you guys, that's it. That's our, that's our little egg display, right? And I think, you know, oh, I think what I might do right now because I just think these are so happy is put a row of these in my on my kitchen kind of counter while I decide how I'm going to do everything 
because look at how sweet that is. Like, just adorable. If you don't seal the egg, uh, if you don't seal, will the gold oxidize? No. Nah. Nope. It doesn't. The sterling, true sterling leaf will. You have to seal it or it's going to oxidize. Absolutely. But this won't. Um, Deborah, I've had stuff that I, I've gilded. This isn't real gold. And real gold, of course, never oxidizes. Um, and this is called Dutch metal. It doesn't. It stays really nice, just like that. Um, but yeah, if you guys, if you're really worried about sealing, just grab some clear wax and then use, I use this little natural bristle um, stencil brush and just put some clear wax, put them out on wax paper while they dry. And you could even then buff them for a little bit of a sheen if you want to have, you know, that eggshell sheen, right? It'll be perfect. Cheryl saying Nigella, oh my God, I love her. Love uh, for food and her cookbooks, absolutely. And the way they shoot her, her cooking show, it's very sexy, right? It's like, I'm like, oh my God, what am I watching, right? And, uh, and, and her recipes are incredible. You guys have to look up, it was in, I think it was the New York Times I saw it in. It's called a Guinness cake, but it's chocolate and it uses one cup of Guinness beer and, um, you know, my husband's like, oh, rats, I have to go out and get Guinness beer. But it's so, it's delicious. It's really moist. And it has a cream cheese, really simple frosting on top. One layer. It was delicious. I'm Googling nonstop this live. Yep, I know, Shannon. It's like, oh, my God. Right? Um, we're bringing up a lot of stuff from the Japanese dish mending to Nigella's, um, I'll share, I'll, I'll put the link for her Guinness cake. I mean, it's, you don't taste Guinness beer. One of my sons, my son Christopher, if he's watching, he's like, well, this doesn't taste like Guinness. I go, no, we don't really want to taste Guinness, but Guinness is a stout and the stouts are sweeter. I love, I love porters, like really rich and it's perfect because it adds this moisture to the cake. It's so good. Oh, Deborah, you don't have Kroger's anymore. That's too bad. But go, I think if you guys go to Marshall's, TJ Maxx, what was the other one? Marshall's, Home Goods. You might find the really good vanilla, Massey, right, Cheryl? Um, and other stuff that otherwise is just ridiculously expensive. So you guys, that's it. There's our little fabulous display decorate your homes with abandon. Like, I'm just going to go crazy. Like I showed you guys on my little pantry tour. I have been bringing stuff up from the basement. A lot of it I am going to be putting on the Surface Anthology shop on Instagram when I do that to sell it because a lot of it's left over from my store. We've got too much stuff. But while I've been bringing that all up, it's like my mom collected sterling pieces, silver, and what good is it if you're not using it, right? So I'm going to make a table. I'll shoot it. You know, I'll do a little video or something and see what you all think. And I want to see what you guys do, right? Um, do you do a little bit of Easter decorating, a little bit of spring decorating? Are you having fun? Can we have first dibs? Absolutely. When it goes live, I will I will let you guys know. Right? You're on my email list, right, Cheryl? I'll let you know, absolutely, because I have so much, so much stuff. And my little shop, you know, the, my space in Deep River, it's so small. I can't, even though I had some stuff down there and it sold, I really need to keep that just DIY stuff until I get a bigger space. Oh, <gasps> hobnail. Oh, one more story and then I'll let you all go about hobnail. Um, oh, you're so, ha you're so welcome, Deborah, for the inspiration. We did, and I might have told this story before, I love hobnail milk glass. I absolutely love it, Shannon. How adorable would eggs be in hobnail, right? And they have that beautiful green, um, white. But I remember a woman came in with her daughter. She came in first, and they were doing a Chanel-themed wedding. And I was like, what does that mean, right? Right? 
They were getting every, they were going everywhere for black hobnail. <gasps> and then she had yards of real silk charmeuse ribbon. And um, what what is the rose? There's a rose um, that Chanel, I guess, loved. They had these roses, black hobnail, and that Chanel pink, really thick silk charmeuse. And then what they also bought were antique books, right? The big ledgers that they would stack. They showed me pictures. It was the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen in my life. But right, Cheryl? Black hobnail with those big like pink, like cabbage kind of roses. And then the silk charmeuse, and it was real silk. And I just, I knew how much this ribbon was costing, but they were doing it themselves. I mean, they had a planner, but they were doing all the decor. I know, it, Shannon, it was breathtakingly beautiful. The black hobnail, and I don't see it a lot at all, was stunning, stunning. How beautiful would black hobnail look with like silver leafed eggs, right? And pink, It'd be gorgeous. But anyway, that's my last story, you guys. I'm so glad. This was so fun as always. Thank you for joining me. And by the way, everybody, April 1st, I'm going to post again. I didn't, I posted once. I didn't want to post too early. I am in the Craft-a-thon by Melanie of Southern Crush invited me and I'm doing paint inlays. It's all about skills this year. And I do all about paint inlays. And I have a couple of projects in there. So I'll be posting again. She has something where you, you can buy an all access path, uh, pass, which is like $25 or $27, and you get access to all the videos for a year, PDFs that have all the links, all kinds of good stuff, or you can watch it free. So either way, I'd love for you guys to check it out. Oh, Brenda, Brenda! <laughs> Brenda's saying they're probably divorced by now, the people with the Chanel wedding. I hope not, but yeah, you never know, right? Oh, at least the wedding was beautiful. Yes, Cheryl, it is fun, and there's a lot of really, really great people. I'm really excited to be amongst all these really talented people. Connecticut people are so fancy, right? Fancy, fancy. Oh, hey, Maureen. Maureen, go back and watch. It's all about, you know, putting little gilded polka dots on our eggs and how to display and all that good stuff. Maureen has a shop. Um, and by the way, oh, I'm going to put a, um, I'll share it on my page. Anybody with a business, anything like that, make sure I have the link so I could follow you and all of us can follow you. And, um, uh, but I'll share it on my page, Surface Anthology. I have to figure out, or maybe I'll share it in an email because the posts on Facebook, they go by and then nobody's going to go back, right? But yeah, Maureen, you, I bet you're doing all kinds of spring displays, right? Oh, they are. Aren't they pretty? And of course, Ironstone makes everything even more beautiful. All right, you guys have the most wonderful Friday, a great weekend. I'm going to be back here on Monday. I think I'm going to be doing Monday and Friday at 11 for my um, lives. Um, I The only thing I'm worried about is if it's a really sunny day Monday. I might have to get my husband. We have to go back to Home Depot for the shelving stuff for the pantry. But get him to get um, put up a curtain rod for me So because the sun is just, I love it, but it's brutal for this. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Share what you're doing. Um, we all want to see what you're making, what you're doing. You could share it over in the um, Painted Cottage Facebook group. If you're in my membership, share it in the membership. If you have a page, let me know. Share it there and I'll share it. It's perfect, right? Cheryl, Cheryl say Monday and Friday at 11 is perfect. Okay, good. I love it. Everybody, happy painting. Go make your